Imagine standing at the edge of the world, where ice meets sky in an endless expanse of white. The wind carries whispers of ancient stories, tales written in frozen water that has waited centuries to be heard. Here, in the remote reaches of West Antarctica, lies a glacier so vast and so mysterious that scientists have given it a name that sends shivers through coastal communities around the globe. They call it the Doomsday Glacier. But this glacier has another name, one that speaks to its true character rather than its feared potential. The Waits Glacier stretches across an area roughly the size of Florida, a frozen river of ice that has been slowly, patiently making its way toward the sea for thousands of years. To understand its story, we must first understand the quiet rhythm of ice itself, the way it forms and flows, the way it holds within its crystalline structure the memories of countless winters. Picture the landscape as it was centuries ago, when the only sounds were the distant crack of shifting ice and the whisper of wind across unmarked snow. Indigenous peoples of the far south knew these frozen lands as places of power and mystery where the Earth's breath became visible in towering walls of blue-white ice. They understood, perhaps better than we do now, that ice is not permanent, but alive, always moving, always changing, responding to forces both seen and unseen. The ice that forms the Thwaites Glacier began its journey as snowflakes falling on the West Antarctic ice sheet, each crystal joining countless others in a slow accumulation that would span millennia, layer upon layer. Year after year, the snow compressed into ice, creating a frozen archive of ancient atmospheres. Within this ice lie tiny bubbles of air from long-go winters, each one a time capsule holding the secrets of what the world was like when that particular layer formed. As the years passed, something curious began to unfold beneath the glacier's surface. The ice, though appearing solid and immovable from above, was actually flowing like a river in slow motion, pushed by its own immense weight toward the distant sea. This journey, measured not in days or months, but in centuries, carried the glacier across a landscape hidden beneath miles of ice, a terrain of mountains and valleys that no human eye has ever seen. Meanwhile, in research stations scattered across the frozen continent, scientists began to notice something that would change how we understand our planet's future. The Thwaites Glacier, they discovered, was not just any glacier. It sat like a cork in a bottle, holding back a portion of the West Antarctic ice sheet that contained enough water to raise global sea levels by several feet. More unsettling still, much of this glacier rested not on solid bedrock, but on ground that lay below sea level, making it vulnerable to changes in ocean temperature in ways that glaciers on higher ground were not. The discovery came gradually, pieced together through decades of patient observation. Researchers would arrive each Antarctic summer, setting up temporary camps on the glacier's surface, drilling deep into the ice to extract cores that told the story of ancient climates. They measured the glacier's movement with instruments that could detect changes measured in mere inches per year. Watching as this massive river of ice made its inexorable journey toward the sea, what they found was both fascinating and troubling. The glacier's underside, where it met the ocean, was melting faster than anyone had expected. Warm ocean water, flowing in currents that originated thousands of miles away in tropical seas, was finding its way beneath the glacier's edge, creating caves and channels that weakened the ice from below. This hidden melting was invisible from the surface, but its effects were measurable in the glacier's increasing speed. As it moved toward the sea, not far from where this story began, in coastal cities around the world, people went about their daily lives largely unaware of the slow drama unfolding in Antarctica. In Miami, families walked along beaches where the sand met water that had remained at roughly the same level for generations. In Bangkok, Venice, and Amsterdam, communities that had lived with the rhythms of water and tide for centuries continued their traditions. Their ancient relationship with the sea unchanged by the distant stirrings of Antarctic ice. Yet the connection between these distant places and the remote glacier was more intimate than it might appear. Every degree of warming in the ocean, every shift in current patterns, 
every change in the delicate balance of temperature and pressure that governs our planet's climate system sent ripples across the globe that would eventually reach the hidden chambers beneath the Thwaites Glacier. The warm water that melted the glacier's underside had once warmed swimmers in distant seas, had once evaporated to form clouds that brought rain to far-off lands, had once been part of the same interconnected system that links all water on Earth. As scientists studied the glacier more closely, they began to understand that its story was not just about ice and water, but about time itself. The glacier existed in a different temporal realm than human experience, where change happened slowly but with enormous consequences. A crack that appeared in the glacier's surface might take decades to fully develop. But when it finally broke through, it could release an iceberg the size of a small country into the sea. The researchers learned to read the glacier's moods through subtle signs, changes in the pattern of cracks on its surface variations in the speed of its flow, alterations in the sound it made as it moved. They discovered that the glacier was not uniform but contained within it. A complex geography of fast-flowing streams and slower-moving regions, areas where the ice was thick and stable, and others where it was thin and vulnerable. Perhaps most remarkably, they found that the glacier's fate was not sealed by the distant future, but was being decided in the present moment. The warm water currently flowing beneath, its edge was already committed to melting ice that would contribute to sea level rise decades from now. The glacier's response to current conditions would unfold over the coming centuries. But the forces that would determine that response were already in motion. This realization brought a new understanding of the glacier's relationship with the wider world. The Thwaites Glacier became not just a remote curiosity, but a barometer of planetary health a massive and slow-moving indicator of how human activities thousands of miles away were reshaping the most remote corners of the Earth. The carbon dioxide released by cars in distant cities, the heat absorbed by darkening Arctic seas, the changing patterns of wind and current that resulted from a warming atmosphere, all of these influences eventually reached the glacier's hidden chambers. As we consider the glacier's story today, we find ourselves witnesses to a transformation that is both ancient and unprecedented. The ice that forms the Thwaites Glacier has been part of the Antarctic landscape for thousands of years, but the forces now acting upon it are new in the geological record. The glacier continues its patient journey toward the sea, but its pace has quickened, its stability has diminished, and its future has become less certain. Standing again at that edge where ice meets sky, we might now hear in the glacier's voice not just the whispers of ancient winters, but the urgent messages of a changing world. The Doomsday Glacier, with its ominous nickname, reminds us that even the most remote and seemingly permanent features of our planet are connected to the choices we make in our daily lives. In its slow-man ocean drama, played out over decades and centuries, we glimpse both the power of natural forces and the responsibility that comes with understanding our place in the larger story of Earth's climate. The glacier's tale continues to unfold, written in ice and water, in measurement and observation, in the patient work of scientists who venture to the edge of the world to read the signs of change. Whatever its future holds, the Thwaites Glacier has already taught us that distance does not mean disconnection that time moves in rhythms larger than human experience, and that the most profound changes often happen slowly, quietly, and far from view, until the moment when they reshape the world we know.